The Bristol Beaufort was a twin-engine bomber designed by the Bristol Aeroplane Company in the mid-late 1930s. For the development of the Beaufort and its service in the Royal Air Force, see Part 1, which is linked in the top right of the video. This current video will focus on the story behind the manufacturing of the Beaufort in Australia and its service with the Royal Australian Air Force in the Pacific Theatre of War. In 1939, a British mission was sent to Australia with the intention of setting up the production of Beaufort in Australia. In the years prior, the Australian government had attempted to attain the Bristol Blenheim and the Bolingbroke, Canadian-built version of the Blenheim, but on both occasions the order fell through, with no aircraft being delivered. With the growing threat of war within Europe, in 1938, Britain began to look towards Canada and Australia as means of aircraft production in an effort to counter the increasing competition from America to supply the air forces of Commonwealth nations. Australia had only months earlier ordered US-built Hudson bombers, and the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation had elected to build the North American NA-33 under licence as a Wirraway. In August 1938, the Beaufort was recommended for construction in Australia. The British Air Mission reported to the Australian Government in March 1939. Practically ignoring CAC, who by 1939 had established a firm base of experience and a trained workforce, the report recommended that for Beaufort production, a new organisation be built upon the state railway workshops in Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia. These recommendations were adopted by the Australian Government on the 23rd of March 1939. In July 1939, an order for 180 Beauforts were received to be equally divided between the Royal Air Force and the Royal Australian Air Force. The Beaufort would be built by the Beaufort Division of the Department of Aircraft Production, DAP, with 39,000 components of the Beaufort outsourced to over 600 firms and seven major sub-assembly plants. These parts were then fed into the final assembly plants at Fisherman's Bend, Victoria and Mascot in New South Wales. The ground work was also laid for the production of the Pratt & Whitney Twin Row Wasp engine in case of shortages of the Taurus engines, with CAC being ordered to produce the Taurus engine. A shortage of Taurus engines proved to be true, and the 90 Australian Beauforts were changed to take the Twin Row Wasp engine. At this stage, Britain still wanted their 90 to be powered by the Taurus, however ultimately, the Twin Wasp engine was used in all Australian-built Beauforts. During October 1939, the Air Ministry in Britain had begun the redesign with Bristol of the Beaufort to take the Twin Row Wasp engine, and at the end of the month, CAC were instructed to manufacture the Twin Row Wasp. With Bristol to provide all drawings, 33,000 jigs, tools and 20 sets of airframe components, the British decision in May 1940 to place an embargo on the export of war materials significantly delayed the Beaufort program within Australia. The eight production aircraft from Bristol were sent to Australia as a pattern aircraft, but 27,000 jigs and aircraft components, such as turrets, instruments and self-sealing fuel tanks, had to now be made locally. The pattern aircraft, after being modified to take the twin WASP engine, took to the air for the first time on the 5th of May 1941. Australian Beauforts had over 2,000 alterations made to it, mainly revolving around the change in power plants. The use of the twin row wasp engine meant that parts of the aircraft, such as the whole engine nacelles, engine controls and cowling panels had to be redesigned. The first DAP-built Beaufort took to the air for the first time during August 1940, three months since the pattern aircraft from Britain flew and only a year behind the original schedule. By early 1942, the Beaufort began to enter service with the Royal Australian Air Force. The first 50 production DAP Beauforts were designated Mark V. Six of these aircraft were delivered, one crashed on its delivery flight, to the Royal Air Force's No. 100 Squadron, based in Singapore, to replace their aging Vickers Wildebeest. However, with Japan's entry into the war in December 1941, and then the fall of Singapore in February 1942, it was decided that all Australian-built Beauforts would be delivered to the Royal Australian Air Force. The remaining 130 aircraft of the original 180 order were given a range of designations. These were the Mark VI, the Mark VII and the Mark V-A. These differed from the original Mark V in the engines utilised, armaments fitted and the propeller changed. 
For example, in 1942, a shortage of engines from CAC resulted in the importing of twin wasps from the USA. The Beaufort became the Royal Australian Air Force's main bomber within the Pacific Theatre and was utilised by 19 frontline squadrons. They were deployed in numerous roles from attacking shipping in the southwest Pacific, bombing and strafing inland supply dumps and troops, to routine convoy protection and coastal reconnaissance. The final combat variant of the DAP Beaufort was the Mark 8. The Mark 8 switched back to locally produced CAC engines and introduced the new Bristol B1 Mark V dorsal turret and later versions the B1 Mark V E turret which altered the fuselage shape of the aircraft. Majorly, the Mark 8 had its fin increased by 15.5% to help with stability. Finally, the Mark 8 could also be equipped with ASV radar. The Mark 8 was also produced in the greatest numbers, with 520 being built between November 1942 and September 1944. The final variant of the DAP Beaufort was the Mark 9. The Mark 9 was designed for communication duties and as a transport and freighter, and were affectionately known as bow freighters. Bow freighters were converted Mark 8s, with all combat fittings such as guns removed and room for six passengers were added. The prototype took to the air in February 1944 and eventually 46 bow freighters were made, seeing significant service with communication units to the end of the war. With the end of the Second World War, Beauforts were quickly retired from the Royal Australian Air Force. Few Beauforts were retained and utilised in a variety of roles, including fluid spraying experiments and fighting the Great Locust Plague of 1947. The Beaufort was also operated by the Royal New Zealand Air Force as well as the Royal Canadian Air Force. Today there are no flying examples left, however there is a DAP model under restoration to flight in Australia. Currently in Australia there are five Beaufort cockpits either under restoration or on display, as well as a complete DAP Beaufort Mark 8 on display at the Australian War Memorial. The Australian National Aviation Museum based at Moorabbin Airport in Victoria is restoring a complete Beaufort as well. There is also a Beaufort under restoration in the USA by the Bristol Heritage Collection in Hesselfield, Clifton, Tennessee. In the UK, the Royal Air Force Museum London has a Beaufort on display as a Mark IIa and is the only survivor in the UK. The Beaufort would end up being built in considerable numbers and utilised significantly throughout the war. In all, 2,130 Beauforts were built, 700 of which were manufactured in Australia. For Australia, the manufacturing success of the Beaufort was a great achievement for the local industry. Serving in all theatres of war, the Beaufort held its own and served its role very well. Many considered its role in the Pacific to be significant to the Allied victory. This video is proudly sponsored by the official Tomato Wine store. Go fly over there by clicking the link in the description below to find some really awesome aviation products. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. In the meantime, keep flying high.